Hello everyone and thank you for joining me on my call. Today we'll be talking about the future-proof and sustainable healthy diets based on current eating patterns in the Netherlands. My name is Marcelo Tiesler and I'm a member of Blonde Consultants. It's a joint work with my colleagues Rolina Bruckman and Hans Blonk from Blonde Consultants, Peter van de Veer and Franz Koch from Wageningen University Research, Agnes Marta and Anne Lute from Danone Nutricia Research. In this paper, uh, we look at the current day dietary uh, patterns and we apply quadratic optimization to meet environmental targets and nutritional constraints. We do this and explore a set of scenarios. These scenarios include food systems, greenhouse gas emission targets, eating patterns, and some exploratory analysis. Let me explain a little bit more about these scenarios. All scenarios optimize the diets such that the nutritional constraints are met and the diet is as close as possible to the current Dutch consumption. On top of that, we add a few additional requirements. We first explore a few food systems, uh, greenhouse gas emission targets. They include no target at all, a relaxed target, a more strict target for 2030, and an even more strict target for 2050. On top of that, we take a look at the 2030 uh, target scenario and we add eating patterns. So we look at food-based dietary guidelines and a few preferences, such as flexitarian, pescatarian, vegetarian, and vegan. Additionally, we take the 2030 scenario and we do some exploratory analysis. For example, we combine the food by dietary guidelines with the Dutch rule of five, making a very complete and diverse uh, diet. We look at a, an acceptability scenario where we limit the change potential to the diet. And finally, we look at the connection between food chains. Particularly, we look at the production of milk and the production of dairy beef. For this study, we look at the Dutch National Food Consumption Survey from 2007 to 2010. This is the most recent available microdata from dietary survey, which covers a two random 24-hour dietary recall. We look particularly at the adults from 31 to 50 years old, using a list of 207 generic food products. We couple this with the Dutch food composition table, which has over 60 nutritional properties of all of this food. This uh, nutritional table misses uh, the table composition of the amino acids, which we take from the USDA database. For the nutritional constraints, we look at the di Dutch dietary reference values and the tolerable upper intake limit. To look at the environmental side, we take a farm to fork life cycle assessment for all these 207 products, which takes into account greenhouse gas emissions, fossil energy use and land occupation. Unique to this paper is the use of forest acid emission factors for 2030 and 2050. They are 2.04 kilograms CO2 equivalent per person and 1.11 kilograms CO2 per person per day for 2030 and 2050 respectively. Both coming from the IPCC 1.5 degree assessment study. Let me give you an idea of the results we have. When we look first at the Dutch baseline diet, we see that this diet does not meet all the nutritional requirements. For example, it has too much uh, calories and too much sodium and too much saturated fat. It lacks fiber, fatty acids, iron, selenium, and some vitamins. This uh, diet has a high amount of dairy and a low amount of soy drink. Most importantly, it has a very high environmental footprint of 4.2 kilograms CO2 equivalent per day. When we optimize this diet without any greenhouse gas targets, we only correct it for the nutritional uh, inadequacies. This will lead to increase of, uh, uh, for example, trinas, dry beans, lentils, fish, and vegetables, and uh, will have a consequence, a reduction of the environmental impact to 3.6 kilograms CO2 per day which is still not enough to comply with the 1.5 pathway. When we look at the other scenarios, we see that adding a more restrict target will lead to more uh, changes. 
increase of vegetables and some of the reductions, as you can see in the graph in the middle. The graph in the right show the changes uh, necessary to meet the 2050 scenario, which you, you can see can be quite a lot. That's the summary of what we see from these results. We see that the 2030 diet has more vegetables, peanut, free nuts, fish, and soy drink than currently. It's less snacks, less cheese, less butter, less beef, less lamb, and less pork. There's similar amounts of uh, grains and starch, has a lower um, fossil energy use and land occupation. The 2050 diet is actually extremely limited to only a few food groups, which include grain starch, vegetable, milk, fish, nuts, and soy drinks. When we look at the eating patterns, we see that none of the optimized eating patterns contain actually beef. The flexitarian scenario, which by construction has meat, satisfies these requirements by using only chicken and pork. In the vegetarian scenario, egg and free consumption are increased. And most importantly, in the vegan scenario, we see that the uh, vitamin B12 requirement and calcium can only be met by a very high consumption of fortified soy drink. When we look at the exploratory results, we see that the diverse scenarios contain more no meat protein sources and unsaturated oils and the same amount of dairy than the other cheese and 2030 scenario. In the acceptability scenario, the meat consumption, including beef, remains much higher than in 2030 scenario, as does consumption of cheese and unsaturated oils, while consumption of dairy, legumes, soy foods, and, and tree nuts are lower. In the beef and meat, uh, interdept analysis scenario, we enforce a requirement of eight grams of day of beef for every 368 grams of, of milk, but the amount of cheese, pork, and chicken are then lower than the other scenarios. What are the conclusions that we take? We can take from this paper that the current dietary intakes in the Netherlands do not comply with the local nutrition requirements and have a quite high greenhouse gas emissions. Optimizing the current diet fund. Uh, to comply with the emissions reduces uh, the, the impact to, by 13%. The reduction of the Dutch diet to meet the 2030 uh, target and 2050 target translates uh, into dietary change with less meat, especially beef, cheese, butter, snacks, and more vegetables. This change seems acceptable for 2030 scenarios, but the changes are a bit too drastic for the 2050 scenario which will uh, raise questions on whether this is an acceptable pathway. In this study, uh, we think the positive side of the study is that the use of dietary individual dietary intake data instead of just commodities tables. And there's an LCA data from farm to fork that takes account for the trends and production efficiency and for future scenarios when forecasted for 2030 and 2050. We use quadratic programming and there's a sensitivity analysis in the paper, which I don't have time to discuss. This study is however limited by the diversity and acceptability scenario are hardly scientific, scientifically defined and remains a choice of the researcher. We look at one food chain uh, relationship, but of course there are many more in the uh, complete food space that we, we live today. And some aspects that might be more relevant for acceptability of the diet cannot be so precisely model in this model, such as price, taste, and texture. Also, the comparability of the other studies is a little bit difficult because of the way each study is set up. We see that the current trends in the uh, diet are not consistent. However, we see that there's many solutions that actually can meet the requirements, but a few trends are quite clear. We see that the national recommendations taking into account sustainability issues should rely on local diet modeling using only food consumption diet to ensure acceptability. We also see that strong product innovation seems to be needed to meet the 2050 target in terms of healthy and acceptable diets. Thank you very much. If you have the time to read the paper or send me questions, I'm happy to get into many more details about this study.